Manchester United have just beaten Aston Villa thanks to a late winner from Scott McTominay, securing the 2-1 win and a crucial three points in the race for the top four. However, despite the win, I think fans remain unconvinced. It was a chaotic game, it lacked control. Were Manchester United good or were they not? Well, actually, I don't think it's quite as clear cut as that. I don't think it was a case of being good or being bad. I think, in my opinion, this game was played in three main stages, as we can see in the expected threat chart from the match. So that's what we're going to do today. Break the match down into three main stages to really see what happened and why perhaps United weren't as bad as you think. So we'll start off with stage one, the first phase of the football match, where, in my opinion, Manchester United were on top and looking good and looking threatening going forward. What was happening in this stage of the game? Well, Aston Villa were looking to play the ball out from goal kicks short from the back, with Carlos and Longley splitting either side of the keeper. From here, United pressed high in a 4-4-2 shape, exactly as I recommended in my tactical preview. It looked like this, Hoyland and Bruno Fernandes pushing forward as a front two, Kobe Maynou and Casemiro backing up the press, high on the Aston Villa double pivot. Our wingers were then actually deeper than our central midfielders, tracking the Villa fullbacks, and basically we were man for man all over the park. Someone like Dallow would follow Ramsey into these areas, Varane on Watkins, Maguire on John McGinn, even when he dropped in, United were aggressive all over the pitch. And in this phase of the game, United were pressing high and pressing with intensity. The intention and the intensity of the players was very, very good. We were playing on the front foot, looking to squeeze high, turn the ball over high up the pitch. And that is exactly what we were doing. Villa were trying to play out from the back, but not doing a very good job because we were pressing so well, winning the ball in these areas and then threatening. As we win the ball back, we've got Bruno Fernandes looking to supply the ball to Rasmus Hoyland. And in this stage, we were getting a lot of shots off at goal, but importantly, winning a lot of set pieces. And at this stage in the game, I felt that United really kept Villa camped in their own half because we were winning the ball back high at the pitch, then attacking and looking threatening. And then, of course, those set pieces. Harry Maguire was a massive threat up against Kamara. United were looking good and we get the goal. However, as we can see, going back to that threat map, things then changed for probably the next 50 minutes or so. So the question is, what was the change and what went wrong in this stage? Now, for things to go from Manchester United in control and playing really well to suddenly playing really badly, you would perhaps assume that United had made a massive tactical change which really affected things, but that simply wasn't the case. United was still in a very similar shape. However, the intensity of the players changed drastically. The question we've got to ask is, was this the instruction of the manager to sit off a little bit? If so, he deserves criticism. Or was it the choice of the players to be a bit more passive? If so, they deserve the criticism. Which way around it was, we simply don't really know because we're not the ones making the decisions. But United stepped off a little bit. And what this meant was that United were still high up the pitch in terms of players in advanced positions. You know, uh, Kobe Mainu, Casemiro backing up in high areas. But the intensity on the ball was a little bit slower. Which means Villa suddenly now have chances to take extra touches. And when you give quality players time and space on the ball, they're going to hurt you. And Villa done exactly that particularly down the left-hand side, where they caused a lot of problems. The problems were this. Ramsey starts coming inside the pitch. Now, early on, Diogo Dallo was following him into these areas. We were being aggressive in the press. He was following him into these positions, and it worked well. In this stage of the game, though, for, again, the next 45-50 minutes, he stopped doing that. Kobe Mainu was being dragged by Luiz. Ramsey's dropping into these positions. And what happened here was that Moreno would then fly forward, and it caused a lot of confusion for Garnacho and for Dallo. They didn't know who was meant to be in here on Ramsey, was it the responsibility of Dallo or Garnacho, and who was meant to be wide. And at times we actually saw them both literally playing on the same line as each other. For example, Ramsey would get the ball, both players would be way too wide, so they would then both come really narrow towards Ramsey, but then Moreno's got a load of room and he's going to fly forward down the left-hand side. But this actually comes from United playing a decent structure, just not having the intensity. There was a similar problem down the other side. Marcus Rashford simply not intense enough out of possession. Body language not very good, not ready to hassle the opposition. So as Carlos plays the ball out from the back and goes to someone like Cash, Rashford gives him a little bit of time to take a touch and get his head up. When this happens, you give quality players, again, time and space on the ball. They're going to find someone like John McGinn in these positions. They're going to find Ollie Watkins. And again, in this stage of the game, the likes of Maguire, the likes of Varane, weren't quite as aggressive in the way that they were pressing. As a result, Aston Villa kept coming forward and had a lot of chances, again, for the next 45-50 minutes. They were the team in control of the ball. We couldn't really do much. And during this spell, realistically, we have to thank Onana, we have to thank Varane, and we have to thank Harry Maguire for some incredible box defence, but also Casemiro and Kobe Mayne who done a decent job in front of them. But it was a problem. United were struggling to get the ball back because of the lack of intensity. The other problem in this spell also was that when we did win the ball back, Rather than trying to slow things down and settle the possession, 
our reaction was of course to go very direct, very quick, get the ball quickly forward to Marcus Rashford, quickly forward to Rasmus Hoyland, quickly to Bruno Fernandes, and it was one of those days where we just failed a lot of these passes. So now, we were losing the ball more regularly, but also not winning the ball back. And that is why that second phase of the game was so bad. However, things turned around again towards the later stages of the game. And that is because Eric Ten Hag made a tactical change. He brings on Scott McTominay for Marcus Rashford. What was the effect of that though? So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, jerseyfifa.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone and now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. The big effect of Scott McTominay coming on for Marcus Rashford was that it moved different players into different positions. For example, because Scott McTominay was now on the pitch in a centralised area, Garnacho went over to the left wing, Bruno Fernandes went over to the right wing. This now also means that Dallo needs to overlap if Bruno Fernandes is on the right wing, so Bruno's going to come inside, Dallo's going to overlap. This naturally now means that Kobi Mainu is going to play in a deeper position. What happens when you do this? We have a player who wants to dictate the tempo a little bit more, slow things down a little bit more and take his time on the ball. This tactical change worked really well. It coincided with a time during the game where Aston Villa massively dropped off. Their intensity levels, like ours had done for the 50 minutes prior, massively decreased. They weren't applying pressure to the ball, they couldn't win the ball back as high. At the same time, United slowed down. Uh, the commentators were getting quite frustrated at it at times, but I didn't mind it. Onana was taking his time on the ball. Phenomenal performance, by the way. But Maguire was taking more time on the ball. Varane was. And importantly, Kobe Mainu was getting touches on the ball in these areas and allowing us to move the ball forward. Bruno Fernandes was moving from wide into these areas here, but suddenly we moved the ball forward a little slower. You know, suddenly we were controlling possession of the of the football again, which we hadn't seen since the first 20 minutes. And importantly, of course, that got Dallow into the final third, wide on the right-hand side, and we saw Scott McTominay box crashing, literally, to score the goal. But the other thing when you bring McTominay on for Marcus Rashford is the intensity boost. I've spoken about Marcus Rashford out of possession, lacking the intensity, the work rate, the ability to win the ball. Scott McTominay completely changes that. He wants to win the ball. He wants to fight for everything. And suddenly we've got 11 fighters on the pitch again. Players who want to try and win the ball back for the side. So in my opinion, those are the three main stages which we saw in this football match, which really decided the game. We had that first phase where United pressed incredibly well in a really good shape. Really assertive, aggressive, winning a lot of duels, winning the ball back high up the pitch, winning set pieces, and of course scoring the goal. We then had that sort of lull from United for about 45-50 minutes, where the intensity completely changed. That could not be the case. That has to change moving forward. Again, was it the fault of Ten Hag? Was it the fault of the players? Not too sure. We don't know who made that decision. But simply by dropping off, we gave Villa too much respect, too much time in the ball, and they're going to hurt you when you do that. At the same time, when we were winning the ball back, we were then panicking and quickly moving the ball forward, leading to more Villa possession, leading to us being more direct. It was a chain reaction. We threatened in transition, but it still wasn't really good enough. Then, in the later stages of the game, we moved Kobi Mainu a bit deeper, more central, and got him on the ball and slowed the game down. Slowed the game down, allowed United to slowly move the ball forward up the pitch. Villa now have less of the ball, and when you've got McTominay in the box as a box crasher with Rasmus Hoyland, it's going to work very well in the final third, and we saw it for the goal. Did United deserve to win this football match? I'm not too sure, but away at Villa Park, it's a tough game. It's a tough game. They're a very good side, and ultimately, you just have to go and get three points. United done that. They ticked that box. Was it great? No, it lacked control. Structurally, I thought it was okay in spells, despite Villa hurting us. For me, it was more about the intensity of the individuals, which is a little bit more concerning, has to be addressed in coming weeks, and perhaps we'll cover that on the channel. But actually for this game, I think that sums it up pretty nicely. The game was played in three phases. Fortunately for United, they had two of those phases. Villa had one. United had the quality in the final third to win the football match, and they got over the line and got a crucial three points. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Did United deserve to win? Was it a good start? Was it a good finish? What went wrong in the middle? And who was to blame for that middle phase of the game just not working? Was it Ten Hag instructing the players to drop off? Uh, to drop off? Or was it the players not really producing the intensity? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like the video while you're here. Comment, subscribe, notifications on, all of that good stuff. But apart from that, we are finished for today. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.